The Automatic Air Collision Avoidance System, Auto ACAS, marks the next big step towards the world's first fully integrated anti-collision system for fighter aircraft. But how do you test such a system without actually causing a mid-air accident? Aviation Week found out firsthand during a test flight with the Air Force's 416th Flight Test Squadron, which has been evaluating the system at Edwards Air Force Base, California. I was in the back seat of Skull One, a Block 50 F-16D flown by Captain Michael Cappuccini, while our target, shown here closing on us, was a single-seat F-16C flown by Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Rooster Schlappy. After calibrating our altitudes and verifying that when disabled, Auto ACAS would not execute a manoeuvre which could potentially cause a collision, we began a series of tests to see if different types of rejoins would trigger nuisance activations. Here, the system activates after a rejoin from extended trail. For some idea of what this looks like, here's a view of a similar rejoin conducted during an earlier test flight. Activation. Rejoins were made straight ahead from trail, from tactical and turning, each with a normal rejoin and an overshoot. Skull 2 then rejoined us briefly before we began another set of tests of an aggressive straight ahead rejoin. The auto ACAS algorithm at the heart of all of these tests is housed in the P5 combat training pod visible on the aircraft's starboard wingtip. In this clip, you see my view of Rooster's aircraft sliding by with no nuisance alerts, and another aspect of the same test taken on an earlier mission. We then flew some turning rejoin manoeuvres, again shown here during our flight, and for illustration purposes, during an earlier sortie. Next came a series of basic fighter maneuvers, including low, medium and high aspect gun attacks. No nuisances were activated, even during the high aspect attack, a classic dogfight scenario in which we chased Skull 2 through a 360 degree spiralling turn called a tuck under jink maneuver. As we rolled into pursuit, trying to keep our gun on his tail, the tight 4.8G turning run resulted in a 770 foot minimum distance but no nuisance. Here's a HUD view of the same tail chase taken on an earlier mission. 3000. After setting up for high closure merge and head-on missile exchange tests, we began a series of close formation exercises which were designed to stress the algorithm in the formation deactivation zone and standby regions. The tests measures the system's response as the F-16 passes over a line of total system uncertainty between the two zones, a line which varies slightly depending on how issues with navigation uncertainty data link and timing are impacting the uncertainty level. The greater the uncertainty, the larger is the deactivation zone. Testing included some aggressive crossovers and a shackle maneuver in which both aircraft exchanged positions in a formation by turning in 45 degrees and crossing over, one high and one low. Minimum distance was 62 feet, with 169 feet during the shackle which was pretty close according to Piccini. Here's some footage from a previous exercise at the end.
To verify avoidance maneuvers can be terminated by the pilot using a paddle switch on the stick, we closed on Skull 2 to trigger an activation. The system thought we were heading up Skull 2's tailpipe, though in reality we were separated by a 1,000 foot safety margin. On the first pass we were activated into a 3.2G roll and pull. You can just glimpse Skull 2 recovering from his maneuver a bunt way off to our port side as we roll out. Other passes result in left and right deconfliction maneuvers. CAP then demonstrated a variety of pilot activated avoidance maneuvers ranging from rolls and pulls from different bank angle entries to a negative 0.5G bunt. The abrupt maneuvering is how a pilot would fly it according to CAP who adds that depending on energy state the roll and pull is a more effective way of getting out of danger than a loaded roll. Pulling 3G into a climb, CAP activated the bunt manoeuvre. Note how particles of dirt roll along the canopy roof as we experience the rapid onset of negative 0.5G. Further pilot activated maneuvers included entering at 460 knots, rolling inverted and letting the nose fall before activating the maneuver. The resulting 45 degree right bank and eye watering 5.9G recovery was startling, and like so many avoidance maneuvers, gave me the impression that the aircraft had been grabbed away from danger by a giant hand. Full duration of each automatic maneuver is 4.5 seconds but can be cut short by using the paddle switch. With fuel running low, our final tests consisted of runs against a virtual aircraft, with the ground test team fooling the algorithm into thinking we were about to collide during a 90 knot overtake. The system activated as we got to within 138 feet, rolling left and pulling 5.7G. Two further runs resulted in short but firm manoeuvres that reminded me of the corrective nudges the auto GCAS dispenses. Our tests complete, we rejoined with Skull 2 and returned to Edwards. Based on the platform established by the Auto ACAS program, the test team plans to take this safety initiative to the ultimate stage, a fully integrated collision avoidance system that blends the benefits of the anti-ground collision system now entering service with Air Force F-16 units with the newly tested air-to-air -air element. While some work obviously remains to finesse Auto ACAS, there can be no doubt that the sooner this system's remarkable capabilities can be integrated with those of Auto GCAS, the faster it will be saving US fighter aircraft and their pilots.